how I got signed to um for the stunts blunts. I was doing I, I was doing a demo for somebody. I rhymed doing it. Mm. So about a month later, they call us down there. So I'm like, okay, I'm about to get a check for these motherfucking beats. <laughs> So I go down there like, all right, yeah, what's up? You know, da da da. They like, yo, we want to sign you. I was like, me? Oh, nope, that's what's up. All right, you know, yeah. let's do it. I wasn't even really looking for the deal, but who who was it, the A and R at the time? Do you know? Brian Chin. Oh, Brian, Brian Chin. Yeah, he he, he okay. was he was a big shot over at Priority. Yeah, he signed Special Ed, um, all of those groups over there. Um, Brian Chin. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a little harsh. To the MC that I was doing the demo for, mm-hmm. but I think they might have just broke him up with some money or something. But um, yeah, actually, the deal just kind of fell in my lap. But yeah. Brian Chen, he he liked the music and he he liked what I was rhyming, you know what I was rhyming. So, and you really didn't have any intentions of rhyme like being an MC. Like nah, it was just something I did. Yeah, yeah. But around this time, I'm around Laura Finesse almost every day. I'm around Grand Pooper Maxwell. Because he was signed to Strong City also in a group called the Masters of Ceremonies. Mm-hmm. So I'm they were around. in Strong City? That's right. But Sexy, Cracked Out. Right. That was okay. Strong City. Yeah, yeah, yeah so okay. I'm, a, I'm around these dudes, and, you know, it's just rubbing off for me. Even though my thing is DJing and still making beats. Mm-hmm. But I knew how to rhyme. And um, one of the first demos I recorded was Best Kept Secret. Mm-hmm. And then when they heard that, they said, okay, we're we going to do an album on you. Okay. Wow. Yeah. How long did it take for you to make uh, that record? How long? Did Stunts you... Blunts? Yeah, yeah. Uh, About eight months. Yeah, about eight months. And at that time, were they with samples and stuff? Was it was it just, you know, Wild Wild West shit, just whatever? Or how did y'all handle it? It's just a collection of records that... In terms of clearances, like clearance samples, was they? Well, I didn't care about that. That was a label's job. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, at that, you know, back then, you just turn turn it in, give them the names, you know, the names you want to give them. <laughs> and, um, that part. But what I want to know is, were you conscious, at least, to avoid ultimate beats and breaks? Oh, definitely. Because what I, the part I didn't get out was right. the you know again like the reason why you're part of the the way and the one Renaissance guys is right. you know there's Premier, yourself, Art <laughs> Professor. That's at the Stunts Blunts. Ali and Tip. That's at the Stunts Blunts. Right, but I just right. meant when we're talking about the the what I consider the people that went outside the circle, what I right. call the Ivy League circle of sampling, mm-hmm. where you guys are now acquiring records that aren't easily available right that's what stands you guys apart but back then was it just a general rule like nope no more ultimate beats and breaks no easy james brown shit like i gotta find some shit that no one has and make some shit out of that i don't know if it was general but amongst that core group of diggers we we had already progressed and you know me living in the bronx a lot, like you said, a lot of the beats that Lou was putting on them records, we already knew about. Right. You know what I mean? So, well, fuck what you heard. I said, people always say, hey, we like the way you make beats. He doesn't use break, break beats. beats. Right. <laughs> that wasn't a jab at Lou. That was just me being honest. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, but. But it pushed, it pushed the envelope further. Correct. Yeah. So, in your mind, who of the initial. Renaissance crew, and I'm talking Pete. I'm talking Premier, Tip and Ali, Large Professor. Um, like, who did you consider like real nice with theirs? Like, I got it. Um, well, like, did anyone ever no, flip I'm, some I'm shit or the like? Question, uh, well, I got to start with Prince Paul. For his work on De La Soul's first album, which really showed me, because at, at that point, it was a lot of James Brown, a, as you know, Quest. Mm-hmm. But that De La album in 89, it opened it opened the doors for me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's so much other stuff out here mm-hmm. that I knew about, but really wasn't on my radar. So I, I got to shout out Prince Paul. Of course, Tribe Called Quest, their first albums. The Jungle Brothers. All these albums influenced me. Um, out of the members you just named, um, obviously Pete Rock's first album. Mm-hmm. You 
know what I mean? And um, the work that me and Showbiz was doing. So, you know, you just take all of that in. And then... Um, Has there ever been a moment where... And again, like, you know, I'm I'm listening to it. Like, I don't, I don't have a deal yet. Right. So anything you guys are doing are like, oh, man, this man is from heaven. But I know that there comes a time where, like, ah, man, I had that record. I should have used it first or whatever. Like, <laughs> has there ever been that moment of, like, ah, they got to it before I did or? Uh, yes. It's been times like that. Yeah. All and right, can I you know, name I know a record? I've, I've used joints that people ran behind me and used. Oh, yeah. And, I was going like, New York shit. And were bigger and, than when yeah. I did it. Yeah. What joints? New York shit. Buster. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, see, yeah. but that, I, that's I almost consider example. that. Yeah, yeah. That's one example. But I consider that an homage joint. Like, if, if 15 right, yeah, years yeah. go uh, by. Yeah, yeah. Just the he two of us. He told me that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's homage. definitely that. Yeah, right. just the two of us. Uh, right, Chub right. Rock. Yeah. That was, you know. DJ Scratch said when he when he did that, he had never heard I went for mine before. What? He said he was on the road DJing for um, the Hit Squad in 92. And. Stunts Blunts wasn't on his radar. I couldn't call. I couldn't call Dude a liar. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, Chub I, Chub Rock. Mm -hmm. He used the Albert King joint right after Just me. Just over, yeah. Das effects. They want effects. I used that for Law Finesse right. first. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. I mean, I can go on and on. Yeah, yeah. Right. I forgot about that one. Yeah, I, th I think in general, a lot of a lot of people when they create, like I think there are people that are creators and then people are listeners. Right. Like I'm a listener. Right. So I'll absorb it. But yeah, oftentimes I'll meet creators that um that aren't hip to but that's in all parts of music, you know. Yes. Uh yeah. you know, I would ask the revolution like was Prince sitting around like ah damn, I got to beat Thriller and like that sort of right. thing like was he and I think Lisa told me like Prince listened to Thriller like for the first time in its completion like I think when they were on, when the last tour, like the parade tour in okay. 86. Right. But for the most part, they had to put him on the shit. Right. You know? Yeah. Like, and so it's like that. My Actually, joint off the record, my favorite joint off Stunts <laughs> Blunts was Check One Two. Ah. Uh, that was like. Yeah. That was, that's, that's my favorite joint too. Really? Yeah. Just the feel of it. Yeah. And like, I, I always, the thing I always like about you, because, you know, I think with producers, I think there's something about producers that rhyme that y'all have an understanding of just really using y'all voices as mm -hmm. an instrument and yeah. like complimenting a beat rather than just I'm gonna bar you the fuck up, you know right. what I mean? Like you, Pete, Dilla, rest in peace. Like, you know, y'all all had a thing. And so I wanted to ask you about one of my favorite verses of yours, like ever. It wasn't even on your album. Mm -hmm. The way you started off Runaway Slave. Still digging, mm -hmm. going back on the block, but my name ain't Quincy. Right, right. What do you remember about that session, or in the making of that album? Because that's like, in terms of y'all's crew, like that album. Those, is, those were good times. Yeah. You know, we all we were all in the studio together. Um, I wrote it on the spot. <laughs> okay. You know, and um, Quincy had that album out back yeah, yeah. on the block. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was a cultural reference. You know, a, a pop cultural reference. Um, yeah, I mean, shit. It's crazy. Those, those, those are a lot of good memories. Yeah. You know, back when we all we, we were just all forming. We already we already we we had already known each other for years. We all grew up with each other, but mm -hmm. around that time we was like, yo, you know, we can all come together, try to form, you know, and um, make a statement, you know. And, and um, I, I would definitely say DITC definitely pushed the culture forward as far as, mm -hmm. you know, trying to dig for music. That wasn't touched already. Yeah, you what, know, just trying to stand apart. I'll say the the first time I was really aware of your existence, like for real, of course, is and I I would say that a lot of us it was show uh, show business on the low end theory. Correct. How right. did that come? How did that? That's come crazy. In? You know, I went there to play beats for Tip. <laughs> I had chopped just to the, play him some beats to yeah I went you know I went there I chopped up this Jimi Hendrix joint and he was really feeling it and he knew I had a deal mm -hmm. and Poobah Poobah was on the track originally mm -hmm. and um the label felt he said some things he shouldn't have said mm -hmm. and um Tip said yo Poo you know I really want you on here but the label wants you to you know change, change your verse, verse up okay and you know 
Poobah in 91, 92, Poobah was like, I ain't changed yeah, shit. Uh, couldn't tell him anything. He's <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Now, the guards, huh. Sadat X and Jamal, they like, shit, we want to be on this fucking record. Mm-hmm. You know, we love Tribe. So while I'm near, Tip is like, yo, you want to be on the joint? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, <laughs> I wrote it on the spot. That's a, that's I, a notable. I mean, even though it's not a debut. Right. But for a lot of us, we feel like that was like well, your- Well, that preceded your... my album. Right. So it was like an alley-oop. It was a great setup. It was a great setup. Yeah. It was a great setup. Yeah. 